This video has been a long time coming and I'm finally excited to bring something like this to you guys on this channel. Now, obviously for the last year and a half, we've been in the pandemic and here in Canada, there's been no live sports up until very recently. And now that I'm finally getting to shoot live sports on a semi-frequent basis, I finally get to bring you guys along on one of these days where I'm shooting a live sports game. This video is gonna be a bit of a vlog slash a you know, walkthrough of what I do on a game day, anything from you know before the game, what I'm packing in my camera bag, uh, what I do when I get to an arena or a venue, and even up and then when I'm in the action shooting a sporting events, just to give you guys a little bit more insight of what goes through my mind and why I make certain decisions and et cetera, et cetera. Today we'll be shooting a basketball game for the Canadian Elite Basketball League, which is the highest level pro league here in Canada. I'm gonna be shooting a couple of their games this season, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity for me to bring you guys along and show you how I do my thing. So we have a bit of a drive ahead of us. I'm probably gonna leave in the next hour or so. I still gotta finish packing my bag and dumping my cards. So I'm gonna take you guys through what I'm gonna do before a game, how I pack my bag, what I'm taking, what I don't need, just to give you guys an idea of how I really prepare for a game ahead of time. As you guys can tell, I'm obviously in the middle of packing my bed and my bedroom in general is a bit of a disaster, but I'll just run you guys through kind of what I'm packing right now and what I'm gonna be taking and what I won't need when it comes to shooting a game. I just came back from a shoot this weekend, so my bag is a bit out of sorts, so we're gonna take some stuff out, put some stuff in, tell you guys what I need, what I don't need, so just to give you guys a bit of context, whenever I'm packing to shoot a sports game, you know, my list of items doesn't ever really change. Uh, the only time it really ever changes is if a client or the team that I'm shooting needs something specific. But for the most part, I'm packing the same things every time. Even if it's gear that I don't think I'll use, I'd rather have it on hand just in case. So for example, I might not need a lav mic at all, but you never know when maybe there's the opportunity to mic someone up or, you know, whatever the case may be. And if I don't have a lab, I'm SOL. So I would rather just keep it in my bag, especially if it's small like this. I don't mind just chucking it in there and having it in there. It, it really is no loss to me at all. So of course, the number one thing I'm gonna be bringing is obviously my camera, the A7S III, which is obviously what I'm shooting this on right now. I'm gonna be switching between this and my phone through the video just so I can give you guys perspective. And also at the same time, I'm not gonna be able to vlog with this camera when I'm shooting the game. Some other things I'm gonna be bringing obviously are my lenses. This is my 70 to 200. It's gonna go in my bag. My 28 to 75 is on my camera right now. And I will also be bringing my Zeiss 55 millimeter attached to my Sony a6300. Reason I'm bringing this camera, I'm trying to get more into sports photography. I'm just taking any opportunity I have to try it. And when I'm shooting video on the a7S III, I have it in a cage and it's pretty awkward and cumbersome to take photos with. So the last game I shot, I actually brought this along as a, you know, I just sling it over my shoulder and snap a few pics with it. And it's just good practice, I think, for me just to try and take a few photos and having two camera bodies, why would I not try to take advantage of that? I definitely did it in the past and I want to take advantage of it because this is still a great little camera. It's just been sitting on my shelf for so long. So I'm just going to bring it along and give it, give it some use. Obviously going to be bringing along some camera batteries that are just going to go in here for my A6300, my A6600, and my monitor. Uh, for audio, I usually, in my bag at all times, usually carry a Zoom H1 and a lav mic. Like I said, I probably won't need them, but better to be safe than sorry. The next thing is my filter pouch. So in here, I'll have things like ND filters, ProMist filters, which I have on my camera right now, step up and step down rings, kind of, you know, an everyday staple. I'll bring that along for sure. My cards, a bunch of SD cards. The ones I need are actually on my desk right now. I have to dump them really quickly, but they'll go in here, bringing a dead cat for audio. Probably won't need it, but you never know. Plus a friend is actually gonna be borrowing this for me tonight. so. That'll go in my bag. Uh, Gorilla Pod. I'm gonna bring this for my phone. I don't think I'm gonna use it. I have a little attachment for using a phone on this, maybe to give you guys some perspective, but I don't think I'm gonna use it, but I'll bring it along just in case. In this little case, we have usually where my Insta361R would be. Right now, it's actually just charging right over there in the corner. Uh, but you guys know that this is my BTS camera. so. Gonna bring that along, I attach to my uh, camera cage. So this will be just in the front pocket of my bag. One other really, one other really neat little thing I'll be bringing is this guy. I recently added to the camera family. Well, I actually got this as a gift for my birthday last week. 
uh, a Pentax ME film camera. Um, a lot of my friends shoot film. And you know what? I decided to give it a whirl. So a friend of mine, uh, like Lasagna on Instagram, or Kyle, uh, was gracious enough to give me this beautiful little thing. And I've never shot film before, but I figured it'd be a cool way to shoot some behind the scenes, maybe get some, you know, photos at games, and, you know, just add to the content reel, add to my skill set. So, gonna be bringing this along, probably gonna be switching between this and my A6300 for photos, but really excited to try this little guy out. Like I said, never shot film before, so really interested to see how it goes. The next thing up is my Ronin SC2, which will most likely be on the side of my bag over here. Uh, I kind of have a love-hate relationships with gimbals at this point when it comes to shooting sports. I use them for pre-game, or I used to use them all the time for pre-game. Now I've fallen in love with handheld. So we'll see where this fits in my repertoire now. I love this gimbal. It's a great gimbal, but uh, I don't use it as much as I used to use other gimbals. But it'll come along with me nonetheless. The other things I will be bringing are my camera cage accessories now. These guys I will actually usually build before I leave the house. This is just a habit I've gotten into over the last little bit and trust me, it helps a lot when you're ready to go on an arena, your cage is fully built, you don't have to waste any time when you're there, you can just pop your camera in and start shooting. So, gonna build this up right now. I just carry it into the arena, I take it into the car by hand, just better to have it ready to go. Same with the camera, it'll be ready to go in the cage. At least, well today, I'm gonna try and vlog a little bit before with my camera, but once I'm in the arena, it's going into the cage, it's staying in that setup for the most part, unless I need to throw it on a gimbal. So, we're gonna build this out right now. Obviously, batteries, we have a battery here. Uh, gotta grab that charger from the ground, and then uh, obviously we have my Insta360 right here that I use for behind the scenes, so that'll come with me as well. If there's anything I've really learned in the last couple of years when it comes to shooting sports, it, it really is that just preparation and being ready to go when you're at an arena or a venue or an event, whatever you're shooting, it doesn't even have to be sports. Just being ready to go is one of the biggest lifesavers because if your stuff's packed properly, you know where your gear is, you know that your cage is ready, you know that you have your audio solution ready to go, uh, you have fresh SD cards, you know, all these little things that maybe take up, I don't know, like 10 minutes of your time in a day, right before you leave the house, it, it saves you so much time and you're gonna be able to capture so many more things and there's mom moments that I would have missed before if I didn't prep this at home that I get now because, you know, I'm ready to go at a moment's notice, so. Keep in mind, a big tip for me, prep and home. Who's calling me? But um, as I was saying, definitely better to be prepared when you're there versus scrambling in the arena. Plus, I think it just gives a better impression to everyone who's there or the client that you're shooting for. If, you know, you're there, you're looking professional, you're set to go, you're not wasting any time. But yeah, always try to be prepared when you arrive and you will love yourself because of it. Last thing on my to-do list before a game is make sure my cards are dumped and formatted, ready to go. Uh, so both of the cards that I'd be using on my A7S3 and my third one, actually I'm gonna check the third one, uh, are ready to go. It's just my Insta360 card that I have to get, you know, double check and make sure that everything is on a hard drive before I format it at the game. And then we're good to go. Made it to the Meridian Center, Niagara. It's been a while since I've been here. Last time was probably three years ago with Ryerson to watch a game. So, been here before, but I haven't shot here. Actually, no, I did shoot that year. What am I saying? <laughs> but yeah, we'll see how it goes. You guys go from the back. From the back. Okay, thank you. Yeah, right there, dude. For the Meridian Center? Yes, I'm shooting for the CD officer. Okay, yeah, for sure. Come on, come on. Have you done the pre-rep shooting yet? No, I have not. Out of 
all the venues so far that I've been to, probably the best lighting, probably just the nicest setup. And with fans here, I'm actually kind of excited because it's been a long time since I shot a game with fans. So really, really looking forward to this. First of all, we got warm-up shots. Sony A7S3, 2875 on a gimbal, just for some stuff. I'm trying to use it a little more, I don't use it enough. So warm-up shots first, we'll switch handheld for the game. Start the second half. Got a couple highlights in the first. Have to send them off right away to the league. I don't even know if you can hear me over the music, but third quarter and then the Elam ending, which if you don't know, it's a bit of a different ending from a regular basketball game. Essentially, it guarantees a game-winning basket and it prevents a long ending of a game like you normally see at the NBA. So by the fourth quarter, I'm going to be scrambling to see what teams ahead and might have a target mark. They had a target score. So we'll see how that goes. I feel pretty good about what I've captured so far this game. I was at the far end for two Niagara dunks, but I got what I needed going to the fourth, the third and the fourth quarter.
so game's over. Uh, Niagara won on a free throw. Unfortunately, with the Elam ending, sometimes you do get the final point on a free throw. So, but a great game. Lots of highlights. Niagara absolutely dominated the game. Right now, I'm just sending off the Elam winner, the one free throw that won the game, over to the CBL. And then I'm gonna back myself up and we're going back to drive to, uh, to Oakville. So let's get this done. I always tear my gear down before I get to the car because I'm trying to make sure I have all my stuff and don't forget anything because camera gear is expensive and you don't want to lose it. done let's get out of here great day of shooting i think this since covid has been my favorite game to shoot so far i feel like i got a good a lot of good highlights a lot of good looks especially for niagara but yeah that's that's it for today now we just got to get home drives a bit long back to oakville but we'll make do but yeah i think every game i've shot since i've gotten back into it since covid began has just been more and more refreshing and more and more getting back in the swing of things. The first couple games I did, I definitely missed a few clips and highlights I should have gotten. And now it's more just being on the ball. I think the thing here is I'm not used to uploading clips mid game. I'm more of just let you shoot the game, look it after. So it's also helping me keep a little more organized, which is kind of nice. Now I just need to figure out how to get out of here. Oh, it's wet. That's not nice. See, I didn't even realize we're supposed to have rain. It's all wet and humid. All right, I'm gonna drive back home. Might edit some of these tonight, just cause I'm real happy. And like I said, it's just, it is like about getting in a rhythm of it. I think when you shoot sports and you, you get in the rhythm of it, you know the right times to not hit record or you know who to look at or what place to wait for. And, so definitely the first one I shot since the beginning of COVID. Definitely since the first one I shot, I feel a lot more comfortable. And also this is my first time using the A7S III in a game scenario. So it's also getting used to a new camera in that scenario. There are some things I love about it, some things I don't really love about it, but it does a fantastic job. Uh, the one thing I definitely learned is marking in camera is so key for sure.